Hello everyone, welcome to the Diana introduction uh, webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Jean-Claude Borel and during the next 45-50 minutes I will give you a general overview on uh, the analysis capabilities of uh, Diana finite element program and its application in the civil engineering field. So let's start and uh, discuss uh, about uh, Diana. So Diana is a short form of uh, displacement analyzer and is a general finite element program, which is uh, dedicated to all types of uh, civil uh, engineering structure, including bridges and uh, structure and infrastructure, uh, geotechnical and uh, also petroleum engineering application. Our aim is to provide a range of uh, efficient uh, engineering solutions to the daily or specific types of engineering problems that by increasing the accuracy of the final results, our client could optimize the cost of their, uh, of their project. Our core values uh, of our company are presented on this slide. Uh, and I would say based on the trusted relation with our clients and, martyr, and partners, we try to uh, mature uh, dynamic and innovative ideas to uh, deliver uh, state-of-the-art solutions and quality service uh, in a world-class uh, product. So it's uh, quite uh, ambitious. On the next slide, uh, we present a list of, of some of our uh, valuable clients. Uh, probably uh, some of you are part of this company or familiar with them. We have uh, clients uh, in uh, different countries uh, all over the world from uh, different organization types, from governmental organizations, uh, academic, university, or research organization, but also from uh, the private sectors like consultancy companies or construction companies, from uh, different uh, sectors, uh, such oil and gas, uh, energy, uh, underground structure, so we appreciate their uh, effort uh, in uh, trusting and using Diana for their project. With respect to uh, Diana application, uh, I quickly go through some of the main uh, key features and uh, activities. We start with, uh, with geo geotechnical and uh, tunneling. Uh, we have a very good uh, integrated solutions for uh, all types of uh, geotechnical and tunneling applications. So you can use the uh, integrated environment of Diana for uh, any types of tunneling and underground structures, for ground freezing, also called three-phase uh, three analysis, for real uh, soil structure interactions. So if you have some sort of interaction between the underground and the surrounding soil or rock, you can model it with the concept of uh, nonlinear interface behavior. Coupled groundwater flow stress analysis, uh, slope stability, and uh, many more. As you can see with uh, on the slide, we have also uh, many wizards in Diana for modeling of uh, piles, uh, sheet piles, including predefined library of uh, parameters as well. Next to that, uh, we have a very comprehensive solution associated to uh, reinforced concrete and early age behavior of the concrete cracking. That's mainly when the model and the casted concrete go through the process of hydration. For any types of concrete box uh, girders or composite structures, uh, could be interaction of concrete with metal or combination of concrete with the fibers. For dam structures, uh, if also very important because of the process of casting, curing, uh, hydration, and uh, impounding. We have a, a good coverage for uh, design check, including the reinforcement uh, based on the Euro code, uh, mobile load and design load generator, and indeed the cross-section design check. You can use it in conjunction with your bridge application or your general structural analysis application. We have different uh, solutions in order to give you a good estimation about the nonlinear response of the model without entering into the nonlinear detail parameter input and setup uh, iteration like the sequential analysis. Temperature and uh, stress coupling uh, let you analyze uh, how the concrete goes through uh, aging 
uh, that's also something that will be uh, uh, discussed and uh, touch based in our demo. Cooling pipe is also another powerful uh, feature that we offer in uh, both 2D and 3D in order to control the hydration process. Crack initiation and propagation in concrete, uh, one of the powerful feature in Diana. And also uh, fire effect, how the fire could uh, affect the durability of the structure. Among other applications, uh, we can refer to uh, masonry and historical construction. In Diana, we offer different solutions at meso or macro levels. You can use Diana to model the interaction between the individual bricks and the mortar joints. For dams and dikes, uh, Diana offers a solution. It covers all the aspects of uh, construction for all types of dams uh, structure. You can consider the fluid structure interaction, dynamic effect, and also induce damage to the structure. So this is really the solutions for dams and dikes. Fire analysis is another area uh, that, uh, based on its importance these days, has become one of the main topics for structural checks. Diana can be considered as one of the most uh, reliable solutions in this field. And for earthquake analysis, you can use Diana for general dynamics or uh, seismic uh, uh, aspects. Among the advanced type of application, Diana is also very well known uh, in the field of uh, oil and gas and nuclear structures. Uh, so based on the type of complexity, you can simulate 3D uh, geomechanical depletion, uh, borehole stability. For nuclear structure, you can analyze concrete uh, containments or underground waste uh, storage. Let's now look at uh, the Diana environment. So for the environment, the look and feel is uh, very natural. Uh, it's a uh, yeah, Windows-based uh, program. So uh, the interactive environment is divided in a couple of uh, um, window, such as uh, the model window on the left, where you see all the components of your geometry mesh, all the entity you create. You have a property window where you want to have more information on the different components of your model. On the right, you have uh, an analysis window for the analysis setup. You have the output window for the result of your analysis. Of course, on top, you find the toolbar with all the shortcuts that you can also find under the different menu for modeling or inspecting uh, your model. And uh, next to that, we have two extra uh, a message window. One is a message window where you see uh, the progress of your analysis or any error message or warning message. And next to that, we have also a command console uh, where basically you can see the logging uh, in terms of Python command of the actions that you have uh, been doing uh, during uh, modeling your, uh, your uh, building or any kind of structure. And of course, the main window is a working window where you have uh, you, you can display your model, your mesh, the results, and uh, etc. So, the look and feel of uh, the Diana environment is very uh, intuitive. With respect to the environment, we deliver the state-of-the-art uh, solution. So uh, we have intuitive uh, graphical uh, user interface, as I mentioned, with various uh, display options. Uh, advanced selection methods. Uh, it's all based on uh, parasolid modeling functions with automated and robust uh, geometry check and uh, repairing tools. We offer a powerful and automated mesh engine, uh, both 2D and 3D, uh, which allows the generation of embedded reinforcement. And uh, you have also an automatic uh, selection for the element type. We have a uh, good coverage of load and model condition, uh, so uh, you can define any kind of uh, support or load and model condition. It applies to the geometry, and it can be uh, even function-based. And uh, thanks to the compatibility to Excel, you can easily copy-paste uh, table. And for the post-processing, of course, uh, we also offer a complete solution to uh, result uh, interpretation. 
In terms of uh, material model class, uh, we have a separate uh, dialog box with uh, various uh, input fields, as you can see on the, on the right, uh, with uh, some unique aspect to the activity in this virtual model. So uh, this uh, dialog box are supposed to get through the definition of your model and to uh, now on your choice. So it's quite uh, user friendly. You can define load combination. Uh, you can generate design load combination or generate a distinctive load combination for analysis through a load combination table. As I mentioned before, you can generate function, uh, special or non-special non function. Uh, you can parameterize uh, your uh, operations. And uh, next to that, we have also the analysis window where through an intuitive environment, you can set up your uh, analysis and the different aspects of your analysis. And of course, we offer many more. In terms of uh, workflow, we start uh, basically with the geometry definition, which is uh, the main uh, modeling part, uh, modeling step in Diana. Then you assign properties to your geometry. Uh, so in terms of material property, physical properties, load and the boundary condition. Then you generate the mesh. Then you set up your analysis. You run the analysis and finally you check your results. If by any chance uh, or any reason you need to change some uh, something in your property, in your loads, you'd always do that at the geometry uh, level. So it means that you always have to regenerate the mesh before this uh, modification are taken into account and before you can run your analysis. Let's take a look at the uh, geometry modeling. Uh, we have many options to create geometry uh, for your model. You can uh, import a CAD file. You can define some uh, primitive basic shapes. We have also some uh, operations such as move, rotate, scale. You can perform a Boolean operation. We have a uh, multiple uh, level uh, selection uh, filter uh, allowing you to select uh, specific points, lines, faces or bodies depending on the on your choice. We have automatic clash detection. You can also convert bodies uh, to sheet or sheets to bodies. Uh, you can rotate, you can move, uh, you can extrude or you can uh, extract a subface. And of course, there are many more, but just to give you some uh, hint about what uh, we offer. You can uh, import your geometry uh, from third party CAD program, uh, or you can generate your model from an uh, integrated environment. So, among the format that Diana and I can handle, uh, we can mention the DWG, the DXF, uh, the STEP, and IGS. They are fully, uh, fully supported. You can also uh, import an IFC file format uh, if you are using Revit. Uh, furthermore, if you are dealing with uh, terrain uh, geometry, uh, for instance, you can import cloud of nodes and generate uh, Bezier surface from, uh, from them. After importing the geometry, uh, there is a geometry check. Uh, you can always check the tolerance and the quality of, of the imported shapes, which is always a, a good thing to do. You can fix it, uh, improve it based on certain features that we have in Diana uh, to enhance your uh, imported geometry. Otherwise, uh, you can use uh, basic tools huh, we offer in terms of modeling. Uh, so for instance, for solid, uh, you can define block, cylinder, cone, prism, torus, or sphere. These are the, the primitive and uh, generate your, your 3D model. And of course, we have uh, equivalent options uh, for 2D. So you can generate a, a polygon sheet, a circle sheet, a line, uh, a circle, uh, a Bezier curve, or 1D, you can just generate a, a vertex. So these are standard uh, functionality. You can perform uh, different modeling operations. Uh, you can unite, you can subtract, you can intersect uh, shapes or you can uh, transform them uh, by moving, by scaling or rotating. You can uh, sweep your geometry, which is a, a very nice tool. So for instance, if we take this example, you can have a reference shape uh, and uh, a kind of reference wire, or let's say a gated, a gated uh, curve, and you can sweep uh, along this uh, curve or wire uh, your geometry 
and uh, elaborate more uh, complex uh, 3D geometry from this uh, sweep option. You can generate complex geometry with minimum information using some of the smart functions like the lofting operation that we uh, offer in uh, Diana ID. Uh, as I quickly mentioned, our selection window is interactive and object-oriented, so you can directly select them based on the selection filter. So if you, for instance, uh, set your uh, select selection to face, then you will be only able to select a face. If you put it to uh, vertices, you will be able to select a point. So this is uh, object-oriented and makes your selection uh, easier. We are using uh, auto-clash detection. So you don't have to worry about the nodal connectivities of the different components of your geometry interacting with each other. Diana automatically uh, takes care of that for you, ensuring perfect continuity and uh, connectivity. There are other options uh, in order to improve uh, your geometry, uh, where you can uh, sew two or more sheets, or uh, uh, as I quickly mentioned earlier, you can convert bodies uh, and sheets. So going from sheet to bodies or bodies from sheet. For uh, any operation in the model with respect to the load and boundary condition, uh, you can use the input option to have the trace and track of the imposed load or boundary condition acting on your reference uh, geometry. So basically, you, you take a, a sheet and uh, basically this uh, curve line should be uh, the location of your load. You can uh, easily uh, create these two shapes, input the curve line to your sheet, and then it becomes part of your sheet. But then uh, when you apply your load or boundary condition, you can easily select this uh, line uh, as part of your uh, existing shape. Other modeling operations uh, enables you to uh, rotate or move face or adjust uh, your shape. So this can be done uh, via dialog box or just uh, dynamically in the work uh, window by uh, moving the uh, mouse uh, around the different uh, circle who represents the different uh, rotation through the different axis X and Y, Z. You can select and extract uh, and then extrude uh, selected face or edges. Uh, this can also be done uh, interactively. You can match uh, different, different parts of your model with respect to each other using the aligned faces uh, function when you have different objects in your working environment. With respect to the function, it can be assigned to the geometry. Uh, here is an example of a bridge where it's model with shell and uh, we are assigning a, a special function for the fitness. You can uh, define a uh, frantic water level in both 2D and 3D. Uh, this is a powerful feature in the context of uh, geotechnical application. Another strong feature in Dyna is the Python scripting and the geometry optimization with respect to the effectiveness of the model when it's subjected to such a load. And now you can reinforce and retrofit the model because of the load distribution pattern in the model. There are many powerful features that you can induce and use in conjunction with other tools that we have in Dyna based on the Python script. For meshing, uh, we have different types of measure. Uh, these are smart processes. Uh, they recognize the generation of your geometry. If your geometry is based on extrusion, uh, our extrusion mesh comes into the picture and generate a nicely patterned structured mesh. We adaptive uh, element size that uh, enables you to increase the density of nodes and elements at certain corners and edges in order to have a smooth uh, transition mesh. So you can see uh, the difference between having, uh, having this option on and uh, off. You see that uh, the, you get a coarser mesh in the edges where uh, it's needed to smooth your mesh. Uh, another example, you can see this effect here. Uh, if you have a terrain geometry, for instance, you can see the difference with or without this additive uh, element size option. You can observe that uh, with this option, you have a smooth mesh uh, transition in uh, some uh, particular area. You can see that uh, in this uh, particular area, yeah, compared to this one without uh, this option activated. 
You can also use grading to optimize your mesh. Uh, you have full control on the distribution of the nodes and the elements. After meshing, you can visualize the type of section that you have assigned to the model based on the different profile that we have in our library. This is done using the real dimension and uh, it enables you to check the orientation and eccentricity and give you a kind of a real uh, 3D uh, view of your, uh, of your model based on uh, beams or shapes. At the mesh level, uh, you have different way of presenting that enables you to inspect or present your model in the most suitable way, uh, such as a wireframe, feature edge, or solid shading. Although there are different mesh uh, engine which uh, enables to generate uh, structured or unstructured type of mesh, here are some uh, some of the examples with auto mesh or uh, map mesh. Another powerful feature is uh, incremental meshing. Uh, this is uh, very interesting when you are dealing with complex model and you need to do some modification at the geometry level for any reason. Uh, thanks to this incremental meshing, meshing you don't need to uh, remesh the whole model. Diana automatically goes for the meshing of the geometry parts of your model that have been subjected to modification. This way, you can uh, save a lot of time in terms of meshing or remeshing of your model when subjected to change. Uh, so for, as an example, this, uh, this building, uh, well, when you mesh it from scratch, it takes 623 seconds. And by just uh, doing humidification and uh, at the reinforcement level, and just remeshing using this incremental meshing, you just remesh in 111 seconds. So it's quite a, quite a powerful uh, tool for complex uh, model. At the end, uh, we have a series of uh, online uh, documentation, uh, including verification report as well as our background uh, theory uh, manual, and also uh, almost 100 step-by-step uh, -step tutorials uh, are available on our uh, website. So this is a quick uh, overview on uh, the capability and aspect offered by uh, Diana. Uh, in the next uh, 20 minutes, uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, an example, which is a flow stress analysis of the box girder bridge. This is uh, actually one of the tutorials uh, also available uh, on our website. Uh, so this is a cross section of the box girder. Uh, due to the symmetry, we will only model half of it in the context of a plane strain model. Uh, we will uh, perform uh, its tiger analysis, so it will be a, a transient heat followed by a structural nonlinear analysis. And for the transient heat transfer, we will specify some heat flow property for the concrete in terms of uh, thermal conductivity and uh, thermal capacity. Capacity. We will uh, define uh, some flow boundary elements uh, for the heat transfer uh, with a convection only property. And uh, for the young hardening concrete, we will uh, use the following uh, adiabatic curve, uh, which is represented there. And uh, we will uh, use a, a model called 2010 with a concrete class C30 for the concrete. And before I jump to the live demo uh, and switch from screen, I uh, just want to uh, mention that uh, in two weeks' time from now, we will have our, uh, our regular uh, nonlinear behavior of reinforced concrete structure courses, which consist of uh, six uh, modules of uh, two and a half hour each. Uh, so from getting started to reinforced concrete with the different aspects, the heat analysis, uh, Python scripting. So uh, this course you can uh, register online uh, and uh, it will be given uh, over the two weeks period from 13 to 28 uh, of September. And uh, basically you have a, a course module, three course module a week uh, of two and a half hours uh, and consists of a presentation, case studies and a Q&A. So we, are, we still have a few seats left for this course, so don't miss uh, the opportunity to, to register. So let's uh, now jump to Diana.
and uh, move to the Diana environment to uh, model this uh, box gear. So as I mentioned, uh, we will uh, model only half of the geometry due to the symmetry, and uh, it will be a plane strain uh, model. We will uh, define interface boundary element uh, to model the convection, and the transient uh, staggered thermostructural analysis will be performed to evaluate the sediment hydration, uh, such as the degree of reaction, the temperature variation in time, and the cracking of concrete. Uh, we will use quadratic element to ensure strain compatibility. Sorry. Uh, so Diana IE automatically will uh, solve the heat flow problem using linear element and the structural problems using quadratic element consequently. Uh, so the thermal strain and total strain field are linear interpolatory across the element. So this uh, compatibility is automatically ensured by, uh, by Diana. So let's move to the Diana environment. Well, probably some of you are already familiar with, uh, with it. So here you know, on top, you have the, the different icon and the different operation, and this is the main uh, window. So when you start, you always have to define a new project, and that's mm -hmm. what we do here. So I'm going to call it demo box gather. Then you have to uh, browse to your working directory. I already created a, a directory for this uh, demo, so I stick to that. The next step is to uh, choose which analysis type you want to perform. So in today, uh, we will uh, make a structural analysis and a heat flow analysis with so combination of both. So you need to activate these two. The dimension of my model will be plane strain. Then my model thickness will be one meter. This is for the out of plane uh, direction of your model. And here it's important, uh, this is the model size. So you should specify uh, something which characterize uh, a box in 3D or a, a, a rectangle, um, uh, a square, sorry, in 2D, which uh, represents the outer dimension of the modeling box. So always take something which is big enough to accommodate your model. So I'm going to take 100 meter. The default measure type, I go for uh, exact dominant. I choose for quadratic, just to ensure uh, compatibility between the structural and the thermal analysis. And for the mid-side node location, uh, uh, location, I can uh, leave it to linear or one shape. Uh, when the geometry is regular, it doesn't make any difference. This is just uh, make uh, it's important when you have curved edge, because then it's about the position of the mid-side node of your element. So whether it's a linear interpolation, so you can be far from the edge or on shape, it's really accurately on the edge. And we click OK. Diana is setting up the environment. Here we go. Next, uh, we are going to uh, define the unit systems. So we go for meter. Uh, we go for temperature in Celsius for the time we will use day, and for the force, we will use Newton. So we are ready to go, and the first thing uh, I'm going to uh, create is basically the section of my box gear. And uh, to do that, I will create uh, three different uh, shapes. One will be the main shape of the box gear, and I will uh, create two uh, separate shape that I will call cell one and cell two, but I will subtract from the main uh, shape. So I click on the polygon sheet and I'm going to call it box gather. And I'm going to define it via coordinate. I have already prepared an Excel sheet with the point coordinate. So to make this demo a little bit smoother and you can just Copy paste, and you see here the, the geometry which is uh, created. So you see that it's blue because I haven't created the geometry yet. So it's a preview mode. So now I'm going to click on create, and then you see that this shape appears under the shape of my geometry tree. So until and unless you have created or click on create, nothing is generated. 
So I continue, and as I mentioned, I'm going to create uh, two uh, rectangle shape, but I'm going to subtract from this uh, main box the other shape. So I start with what I call cell one, for instance, for which I have also some coordinate. So this is one way uh, of uh, creating this geometry. It's definitely not the only one. So this is my first shape, and I click create, and it appears here. I repeat the operation and create cell two. I copy my coordinate there, and I click create. So here I have my three uh, component, and now I'm going to subtract uh, the two sub shapes, cell one and cell two, from the main uh, from the main uh, shape. So the target is the box order and the tool are cell one and cell two. I want to subtract. I don't want to keep the tool surface, so it's going to be deleted. And I click on apply. And then you see that it results in one shape, which is the main uh, shape name, box gather, but without uh, the super uh, shape that we have subtracted. So the geometry of our model is, uh, let's say, uh, almost complete. Now let's uh, assign some uh, properties to this uh, shape. So I click on the assign shape property. I select uh, the box gather. I'm going to use regular plane strain and I'm doing to define a concrete material. And I'm going to use uh, the design code, a uh, design code class and the field model code 2010. Uh, in terms of aspect, I want to include total strain crack model, uh, the shrinkage, the heat flow, and the young gargling. And here you can see that uh, the concrete property are already pre-filled in based on the concrete class A30. So uh, all the model parameters are there. You can even display the, the maturity Young's modulus, the mean of uh, inertial tensile strength. So all this data are pre-filled in for you based on the model code. Repenching cage, we have the property already. And the only part I need to complete is basically my uh, heat flow property. Uh, here, I'm going to use a specific value, as mentioned in my slide. So I need to specify the capacity. And I want to uh, also uh, specify my adiabatic curve. So I have this age temperature curve already in Excel that I can simply copy there. And here I have my adiabatic heat development that I can insert in my model. So my uh, input are complete. I click OK and then I apply that to my uh, model. If I go to my material, I see that I have a concrete material which has been created with a standard color of gray. So if I want to check, for instance, if my material is correctly assigned to my shape, I can uh, color the shape by a material color, and I see that uh, my uh, shape turned to gray. So it carries a concrete uh, uh, material property. It's properly assigned. So now we are going to move to the, let's say, uh, thermal uh, settings and uh, define the thermal boundary condition. So first, I will start by creating some uh, flow boundary elements on the edge of the box gather to model the convection. So we select all the edges uh, of the box gather, except the two vertical edges, which are uh, at the symmetry uh, line. And I will uh, ask Diana to uh, assign flow boundary uh, interface to this uh, edge. So I open uh, the connection window. I define a name, I call it uh, flow boundary. Boundary interface. The filter, I set it to uh, edge, so I can select edges. And basically, I select everything. And then I remove these two edges that are along the symmetry uh, line. So I have 16 edges selected. 
Then uh, I'm going to uh, assign uh, some element class. I go for flow boundary, and here I define my flow boundary property. So I call it flow boundary as well. For boundary elements, and I specify the heat transfer coefficient. And the discharge type is convection only. I click create. I can close that. Then, if I go to the connection type, I see that under the boundary interface, I have a set which is flow boundary. And uh, when I uh, pass the mouse on top of it, you can uh, it highlight where the uh, boundary interface has been created. So now I'm going to attach an external temperature of 20 degrees to this uh, flow boundary element to basically define my thermal condition. So I click on the thermal boundary condition here. I call it external temperature. I give it a set name, the same. The target tape is age, and it's an external temperature that we set to 20 degrees. And it automatically finds out that there is already a, a, a connection set or a flow uh, boundary element created. And uh, basically, you can uh, activate them and associate uh, this eternal, thermal boundary condition to them. That's what we do here. And now, if I move to the boundary condition, I have my set of external boundary condition. I want to make this uh, uh, boundary condition, this thermal boundary condition, uh, time dependent for the transient analysis. So I'm going to associate uh, a time function. So I select this external temperature, and then I click on the time symbol here, and then I can just add my uh, time function. So I say that at time zero, it's one. And after 60 days, it's one as well. So the temperature, uh, the external temperature is constant in time. And automatically, this uh, time function uh, with the factors is associated to uh, my uh, thermal boundary condition. Then uh, we need to uh, specify, um, uh, did I close? Yes. Yeah, it was created. I suddenly had a doubt that I was closing the right link. So now we need to create uh, an initial temperature to know where to start. So to do that, I uh, go to the initial field, dialog box, I call it initial temperature with the right spelling it's even better yep then we assign that to the whole shape it's a temperature i select the whole body and we said that uh, the, the starting temperature, the initial temperature, is 20 degrees. And we create S. And now, if I go to my, uh, apparently, I didn't create it. I have to, I forgot probably to press the Create button. I was too fast. So don't be too fast. Just think twice. So I do it again. Temperature. Okay. Shape, yes. Temperature, 20 degrees. Okay. And now you see that uh, in the, under the initial field, under the geometry, I have my initial temperature, which is uh, created. So don't be uh, too fast, because uh, otherwise you may forget to click on the Create button. Always good to double check. 
So we have uh, specified our thermal boundaries. Now let's uh, look at the uh, static or uh, boundaries for the structural one. So we need to define uh, a symmetry condition and uh, a vertical support. So I go to the support, I call it symmetry. I will make a set which I call support. And I select edges, and I'm going to select these two edges for which I'm going to constrain the x uh, direction. And then I'm going to add an extra support here in the z direction, in the vertical direction, so in the y direction, because we are in a 2D uh, mode. And I create create. So in terms of support, we are ready. The last thing we want to consider is uh, the dead weight. So I uh, open the global load uh, uh, dialog box and I create the dead weight. Close it. If I go to my load, I see my dead weight is there. But I think again, I went too fast and didn't click properly. So dead weight, dead weight, dead weight. Yes, create, close. And here we go. The load is created. And uh, we want to uh, make the dead weight uh, also a time dependent load. So uh, we assign a, a time load function. So just as we did for the thermal condition, we select the dead weight load. We click the time dependent factor button. And then we define our curve. So at zero, it's zero. After seven days, it's zero. Just after seven days, it's one. And after 60 days, it's one. So basically, we want to uh, consider the dead weight after seven days. And automatically, the function is associated to uh, the dead weight. So uh, we have defined the shape. We have assigned the property in terms of material uh, material, condition, material properties. Sorry, uh, thermal boundary condition, uh, structural boundary condition, load. So now we can uh, mesh our model. So we open the uh, mesh property uh, dialog box. Uh, the target type will be a set. We want to sp specify an element size. So I select my entire shape and I put the element size to 0.05 uh, meter and uh, I uh, switch off the additive mesh CD. So just to avoid my screen to freeze uh, via the VPN connection uh, during the meshing process, I have already uh, created the mesh. So the mesh is there, and uh, you end up with a nicely patterned uh, mesh composed of plane strain uh, element and uh, flow boundary element. So if you go to the mesh uh, environment, you can see uh, the flow boundary elements that are created uh, along the different edges of your uh, bridge uh, box theater, and the plane strain element that are uh, for where we assign the concrete property. So the model is uh, is ready, and uh, you get also some information about the number of elements uh, that you get for the different uh, component. And of course, under the mesh tree, you also find uh, the information that are transferred from the geometry, such as the material property, the support, the loads, the boundary conditions, and of course, uh, which element type has been used uh, and where. So the mesh is ready. The next step is basically to set up the analysis. So to save a little bit of uh, time, I've already uh, prepared and run the analysis, but we will uh, quickly go through uh, this uh, process. So first, you define uh, a new analysis uh, by uh, clicking on the Add Analysis uh, button. You can rename this analysis uh, whatever you want. In my case, I, I rename it to Flow Stress Analysis. Then uh, you add uh, different command. So first I started by adding a transient uh, heat transfer and then I add uh, a structural uh, nonlinear. 
So first, the transient analysis, the transient heat transfer analysis, followed by a structural uh, non -beam. So here are the two uh, the two blocks. And now let's uh, let's have a look at uh, the transient heat transfer first. So for this one, uh, in terms of initial condition, I uh, activate the initial temperature field, which is uh, 20 degrees initial temperature that I specify. So this needs to be activated. And for the execution of uh, the analysis, I specify some uh, time steps. Uh, so I execute uh, 10 time steps of uh, 0.2 uh, day, uh, then followed by six steps of uh, 0.5 days, then five steps of one day, and four steps of five days. So that's what you see here, uh, but uh, in a different uh, description. So five, uh, first, the last, the, the last first number is a size step, and uh, between bracket is a number of steps. So you should read it as four steps of uh, five days. And uh, in terms of uh, animesis output, I just use the default, which are the temperature. I can perform the analysis, but I can also go through the structural non-lean uh, analysis setup, and then we will look uh, together at the complete uh, analysis output at the end. So the part of the transient is very simple. Huh? Uh, first, you activate your initial condition, and uh, then you define your step uh, step size, step discretization, and you perform the analysis. Then, for the structural non-mean, the setup uh, will be uh, quite uh, similar in the sense that uh, you have a block where you specify uh, time steps, and for these time steps. Uh, we advise to use the same uh, time stepping that the one you use for the heat transfer analysis for the transient heat, because uh, you can easily correlate the, uh, the result of your uh, transient with the structural non lean after each step, since the step are the same size. Of course, there's no obligation. Uh, the only obligation is to cover the same the step, same type uh, time frame. But having the same uh, time steps uh, make your analysis interpretation much easier because you can really correlate results between transient and structural. So you can really see the, the effect. So uh, you basically, in terms of setting, you uh, in your structural analysis, you add an execute block for time steps and uh, just specify the same uh, time steps. And in terms of output, here we specify uh, that we want some uh, displacement, some strain, and uh, we ask, of course, for some specific uh, parameter output, such as the young, uh, the uh, energy, or the tensile uh, strength. So the analysis is ready. You perform the analysis. So first, Diana will perform the transient uh, heat transfer analysis, and then uh, we'll continue with the structural only. It will result in uh, analysis results, of course. So now if we move to the result environment of the analysis, and you go through the case, you will see that uh, you have time steps going from time steps up to 25, and then it starts again. So the first 25 steps are the result of your transient E transfer. When the, the following one are the result of your structural analysis. Because don't forget that we have defined the dead weight. Uh, the dead weight is automatically applied. So uh, this is basically the result for the same time steps, but for the structural analysis, including the dead weight. So if you want to take a look at the thermal uh, results, basically, you have to look at the first uh, 25 steps. So for instance, we can. Uh, take the last time uh, steps of this uh, thermal stress analysis and look at the temperature profile. And here you see the, the temperature profile of this uh, analysis. We can uh, look at uh, the heat flux, for instance, present uh, some of the vector for the flow. You can access the degree of reaction. Uh, you can access the equivalent H. 
And once you have uh, finished with uh, analyzing your thermal strain, uh, thermal analysis, you can move to the structural nonlin and compare, for instance, the same steps. So the last step of your analysis, the structural, structural one, but including the structural load as well and the effect of uh, your thermal analysis. So for instance, you can look at the, at the displacement, for instance, of the whole uh, model. You have uh, also access to uh, elastic parameters, such as the younger parameter. You can look at the crack uh, index, the stresses, or the temperature strain. So a lot of output are available. And uh, automatically, Diana uh, transfers the data from your thermal to your uh, structural analysis. You don't have anything to worry. The only uh, constraint you have is to uh, set up your model with quadratic uh, mesh order to ensure a strain compatibility between the thermal and the structural analysis. So this is it for this uh, live demo. We uh, quickly uh, touch base how to uh, define a plane strain model in a 2D environment, how to set up uh, the model using model code input uh, with uh, thermal uh, uh, parameters, and uh, how to perform uh, its staggered analysis, and uh, how to take into account uh, yeah, temperature, degrees of reaction of concrete, and hydration process. So I'm now going to uh, look at uh, some of the questions. And uh, for some of them, I will probably maybe reply directly live. Uh, if there are more questions that are similar, then uh, I will uh, speak to the audience. So I'm going to mute my microphone for a little while and look at these questions. Thank you. <laughs> 